ServiceNow Knowledge Store team is sponsored by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. We're back. Welcome everybody to San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We've been talking uh, this week uh, off and on about the hackathon that ServiceNow has every year. It's, uh, there's a little subculture going on <laughs> here. And uh, you know, you got the innovation awards where people sort of gather and submit innovations. And the hackathon is something that, uh, that we, we covered last year with a remote camera. Uh, we talked to uh, uh, Rob Fedork, who's, who's also here uh, again today, yesterday, uh, and he's joined by Chris York, who's uh, in the hot seat in the, in the middle to my right. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Yeah, it's thank you. Be here. So Thanks you guys were us. finalists of, uh, you're welcome, you're, you're finalists uh, in, in the hackathon. You guys collaborated together, just so the audience knows. So uh, these gentlemen are really ServiceNow practitioners, I mean, in terms of their, their, their vocation. That's really what they do well. Uh, Chris, you were saying that you were trained in the early days by Fred Luddy. Yeah, hey, absolutely. When was this? This is 2005. Fred and I sat down together when he was uh, first building the product and uh, taught me how to use it and, and develop on the platform back so then. So what was that like? I mean, this is... I mean, it, it's essentially a changing moment in my life. So I, as soon as I saw that, my, I knew my career had changed. That's from awesome. That point because forward, so. We had Fred on and he took us back to the early days. We had him on last year. We didn't go into the early days this year, but he said, yeah, well, I developed this thing, you know, on an airplane or something. I'm sure he's told you that story. Mm -hmm. And then I started shopping it around and telling, showing people, look, I got this platform. They said, what can you do with it? And he said, anything. And they said, all right, but what do I do with it? <laughs> so he, he took his experience from Peregrine, wrote this IT you know, service management application, and the rest is history. But so w what were you doing before uh, you, you were trained by Fred? Well, I, I knew Fred back at uh, Peregrine Systems. Yeah, okay. Him and I worked together then. So I was, uh, I was just doing consulting in the Peregrine world. Okay. And so HP at the time, they had uh, acquired Peregrine. And Rob, you're also, you know, very much a ServiceNow practitioner. Um, not quite 2005, but uh, well, I guess let's see, 2009 roughly is when you started. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. So, so pretty substantial. And so you've been in this space for a while, mm -hmm. uh, IT service management, uh, change management, yes, etc. Mm -hmm. um, how? I wonder if we could start with this question before we get into the hackathon. How has that space evolved from your standpoint? And Chris, I'm going to ask you the same question, so think about it. Well, I think uh, the ITSM space has really provided a catalyst for, a lot, it's, it's going to sound really crazy, but allowing the business to kind of think like IT, right? And, and have them uh -huh. uh, adopt kind of this, this process focus, and you know, they all have processes, and they all have uh, ways of interacting and engaging with their customers. Like, and I'm not talking the business to its customers, but within the business, each of the silos of the business talking to its internal customers. And so I think what <coughs> people have been looking to IT and some of the ways it's organized and the way it structures its processes and the way their tools help them do that. And ServiceNow is the first platform to really allow the rest of the business to capitalize on that lesson. You know, that's really interesting. That's the first time I've heard that. that allow the business to think more like IT. You know, mm -hmm. On the one hand, people might say, well, well why would we want to do that? But here's why. In the business world, a lot of times you, you have really crappy processes that you hide with revenue generation. So yeah. somebody goes out and books a big deal and you say, hey, let's have a party, let's celebrate, and you know, the delivery is a little spotty, but hey, you made a lot of money, but, you know, great, great stuff. Whereas IT, you don't have that blanket, that security blanket to, mm -hmm. to cover you. you. You don't have a, you know, a revenue party. You have to deliver or you get shot, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, all right, Chris, so, so same question to you. How do you, how, and from your standpoint, how has IT service management evolved in the last in your case, I guess, uh, you know, eight, 10 years. Yeah, well, when I first got into IT, it was a, a pretty wild west environment. You know, a lot of cowboys out there, everybody doing their own things, and, and the resulted in a lot of outages and downtime, and um, so I think ITSM has really stabilized that, focused people on, let's get a standardized process, let's, let's put some controls around places, and, um, and now that we have a lot, much more stable environment and you can rely on the architecture, we need to shift into more of an, let's use IT for an innovation source. And so if we, everybody's doing the same thing and you're always following the process, that's not very innovative, right? But there's a, we need to branch away from that and say, okay, now that we've stabilized, let's, let's tap into those creative resources and use them. All right, let's get into the hackathon. So sure. um, you guys uh, developed something called the social loop, right? So let's start with wh what the hackathon, hackathon is uh, all about. We talked about this yesterday, Rob. So Chris, Take a stab at it. So the hackathon, the genesis, how'd you get involved, and what's it all about? 
Yeah, I would have never called myself a hacker before uh, last year's first entry into right, the hackathon. Right. Are you not a programmer? I well, I, I program, but I wouldn't say I'm a hacker, right? I, yeah, okay. I, you know, I write software and, and customize software. Um, <laughs> so this this whole concept of a hacker was kind of new to me. So I entered the hackathon last year for the first time, thinking, oh, this could be fun. And I it was it was quite frankly the highlight of the conference for me. You know, you, you pull together a team, you come up with ideas, you build it, and you have such a short window to do it. It just fast tracks what you do in your day to day life in eight hours, and it's quite exhilarating to be able to accomplish something by the end of it that. It just seems to me, I mean, I'm very impressed, because it seems to me the, the hardest part about what you just described is just the idea, the creativity, yeah. you know. Um, so the idea is definitely the hardest part. Right, I would it think, is, right? Yeah. I mean, so how did you guys get together, and let, uh, talk a little bit, Rob, about the idea. So, um, how did we get together is, is we all, we're all hackathon winners, so um, we all kind of knew each other from that space, and it was just really easy to kind of come up with a team. In a hurry. So you kind of you created the you, you you stacked the dream team of, <laughs> of hackathon winners. That's, uh, There's that's a lot of good it. competition. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, we, just, we were lucky <laughs> enough to compete and win in the last yeah. version. Um, uh, as far as the idea generation, that's kind of a funny story because we did a lot of work up front in terms of like making sure that the idea was sound, making sure that some of our more uh, technical hurdles could could be actually overcome in that eight-hour period. And then we got here and they demonstrated Eureka. And uh, the bulk of what we had wanted to do was kind of already accounted for in the next version, which we could develop on in, in, during the hackathon. So we didn't want to you look like... You said you could or you could not develop on it? We, we could, could develop okay, on the new so version. Okay, so Eureka was available. So it would be you. like, do we want to grab the Eureka version, add a couple fields to it, and say we hacked something? <laughs> um, so we were kind of on the spot. We had uh, very limited the time to so come up with... you had to call an audible. Basically. Exactly, exactly. And so that's why we're, I'm, I'm really personally very, very proud of our team because where other teams may have had their idea kind of survive day one of the conference, we had to literally, we, we had 12 hours maybe from ideation to execution. Well, and even right up to the moment we walked into the door of the hackathon, the idea that we had decided on in those 12 hours, we didn't do that. We picked a brand new idea right away. Right, right. So you had to start all over. So you did a fair amount of scratch. preparatory work up front. Yeah. For, for another idea. That we, yeah, yeah. yeah. we threw away. We and you just it. tossed it. Yeah. We okay. had to. So it's, in the, it's in the tool now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so you're like, oh, wow. That's yeah. like uh, that uh, Mr. Skin moment in what was yeah. that movie? Yeah, whatever it was. But anyway, um, okay, so, so, so you started with ideation, which all your competitors had already done, right? Um, well, we assume. I, I didn't talk to all of them. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's the best practice, right? right? You figure, if, if anybody who's been through it before knows you don't want to spend a bunch of time doing ideation yeah. at, at the hackathon. You want to start coding. Yes, right? yes exactly. Okay, so this, the, the smart money says, all right, let's do that up front, mm -hmm. maybe have a couple conference calls, do some whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you came in ostensibly with that disadvantage. So how much time did you have to spend on the concept then? It was evolving as we were going, um, and that was actually one of the brilliant things we did, was we involved a, a customer throughout the entire thing. So we, we talked to somebody that had a problem, and we kept pulling them into the hackathon, tell me more about this, tell me more about this, and, yep. it, and it evolved as we went along through the night. So we were collecting requirements on the fly and building it. What are the constraints? So um, you can meet beforehand, that's mm -hmm. cool, uh, and, but you can't start coding beforehand, right? Yeah. That's, that's a no-no. You can't bring any code with you, right? So what we would plan to do uh, each time is we would, if we, if we perceived a technical hurdle, we'd try and solve that outside the hackathon. And then having done it already, we would come to the hackathon and say, we already know how to rebuild it. So, okay, so you, you solve it, technically okay. you know it's feasible, right. you conceptually know how to yep. do it, you've, you've thought through the logic, okay. You just but can't but, but you have to with. write all your code yep. there in the hackathon. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, now how much time do you have to do this? Approximately uh, eight hours. Mm -hmm. so, so you had eight hours to go from idea and concept to finished product. Yep. Okay, so, so how much time did you spend on the idea? Um, no, I mean, the no more part. than four hours. <laughs> No more than four hours. Really? So you yeah. spent half the time. Well, we, we, no, no, we, no, had, a, we so had a direction. So you started first, coding yeah. right away. We, we yes. had a direction yeah. within 30 minutes. Okay, um, so yeah. roughly 30 minutes you lost up front, and then you could start coding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so not too bad. Not not too bad of a head start, although a head start in eight hours and 30 minutes is pretty good for yeah. everybody else. Okay, and then, and I, I, I you said this before, uh, uh, you applied this anyway, the idea sort of shifted and and evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was the idea? Uh, so the idea is uh, to help uh, marketing uh, groups engage social communities. And there is two primary features that we we're focused on. One is um, 
storing the social digital assets, right? So if Gartner writes a white paper, or uh, Forrester Research writes a white paper, or, or, uh, or a customer blogs about, let's say, ServiceNow, and then, and they do, the, say, let's say they do all this stuff tomorrow. Um, what ServiceNow needs to do is keep track of those as if they're assets, yeah. right? So if they come to Knowledge15, are they gonna remember from their heads or their browser bookmarks? where those social digital assets were, right? And so what we do is we've created a repository that anybody could interact with, add content, rate content, um, and then they, they're treated like company assets. They're in, the, they're in the repository, they're not in our brains. Then what they could use is, is to utilize those assets um, to push them out to their kind of passionate brand advocates. So everybody who knows me knows if, if ServiceNow tweets it, I usually retweet it, but I have to be awake and I have to not be at work. Right, so what? what you see it in your Twitter stream, right? Exactly, I see it in my Twitter stream. So, with with somebody who's passionate as I am with ServiceNow, and I want to advocate for ServiceNow, I could I could potentially just tell ServiceNow, like, here's my credentials, tweet on my behalf for your social for your social campaigns. Yeah. So we talked about this yesterday. So you, so the the application, because I said, okay, you don't actually do the tweeting, and you said, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. So you interface with the Twitter API, mm -hmm. uh, and then push it out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, so how did you sort of package it, and what was the instantiation of the, the, the submission? So what did you, did you actually use Gartner white papers and, and other digital assets? Or? No, we, we came with one use case. We just said, we're, we only, we're only gonna have time to do kind of one, one social stream. So we picked Twitter, and we were just, uh, we just kind of assembling Twitter posts on the fly into the, into the content repository. And then, uh, you know, as we were demonstrating it to the people coming to our to our little area, uh, we would launch it, and they could see the tweets go out, and we'd we'd pull up Twitter, and they could see our accounts and see that the the tweets have been made. It's actually kind of interesting that every we we actually launched a campaign at the, at the hackathon to promote our hackathon entry, and um, and we only used our tool to do it. We did not go out there on our own and do tweets. We used our tool to launch the campaign for us. Okay, so you never. Oops. So you never tweeted from Twitter. No, you always, from always the tweeted from the now. app mm -hmm. through the API. Now, um, and you you queued them up, right? So it wasn't always manual. Is that correct? Am right. I so right we, we, we made a mock-up um, campaign, right? Which is our you know come see our show and and visit us and vote for us. So now Twitter doesn't Twitter have thresholds on so because so, it's trying to make sure that you're not a bot. So did you have to sort of design those in, and how, how did that well, all work? Well, um, what we did was we, we integrated the authentication part into it. So from your user record inside of ServiceNow, you could launch um, the authentication portal that basically says, provide my username and password, grab that security um, object for that, and then we'll use that to tweet on your behalf from that point So forward. you could tweet a thousand tweets, and it wouldn't, yeah. Twitter wouldn't flag you. You've authorized ServiceNow to send on your behalf, so. It, it's essentially sending for you. And it's not like you're doing it from one account. You're doing it from as many accounts as are, are your brand ambassadors. And that's the brilliant part about it, because typically corpor corporations broadcast a message from a corporate account. It has a limited reach of followers, but if you could have that exponentially you know, grown because you, you're sending for, on behalf of all your employees, the reach is far, far greater. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in, um, I'm taking a look at the corpus of, uh, of Twitter data around um, ServiceNow, and you can see <coughs> a lot yeah, so, of action. So, uh, here, right? So, so, social loop is all one word. Drop, drop the double oh, L. Okay. And you'll probably find a much better results there. Oh, great. Okay. So we're even getting stuff. Maybe it's I'm just getting pe other people's typos. So here you go. Yeah. Look at all the action. I can load so those things here. came from the application. Okay. So all these tweets, right? Hey, nice job. Okay. This is some of this is social loop. Last chance to vote for social loop. Yep. Yep. So, so that came that from? That came from the campaign that we launched within ServiceNow. And then what is this? This is some kind of deep link back to the asset, is that right? Uh, yeah. that's, that might be a link to a YouTube video that yep. we, we created to. Oh, okay. So once again, we're curating and, and so, so this is part of our campaign content. here. So that went out <clears throat> as part of the tool that you built, mm -hmm. and then it gets embedded into Twitter, so you can now just see it on the, on the Twitter sphere, on the Twitter stream. Awesome. Okay, good. So. Uh, well, congratulations on uh, making yeah, the finals. You. And uh, like I say, you're up against a lot of competition. You had that, uh, you gave everybody a head start, at least 30 minutes, and, uh, <laughs> and some serious panic. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, even though we didn't win, I, I, no regrets at all. Like, it was yeah, a fantastic sure. experience. You know, brought the team together, some of the people I'd never met before. We 
came together at the conference for the first time. So now, will this app great. live, or was it? Does it? Oh, oh absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you, you got use cases for it, and mm -hmm. you'll share it. And the, the feedback we got from the people that we showed it to was, "I want that now." You know, yeah. when we, can we've I had, it? We've had two people solicit us for prices. Awesome. In order to, to buy it. Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, congratulations, guys. Really yeah. appreciate you Thank coming you. on the cube. It. Rob, good to see you again. Thanks for having us again. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back to wrap up from ServiceNow Knowledge. This is the cube. We'll be right back. Thank you.